Welcome back to Motivated Motorsports. Today's episode, we're going to be taking this guy out, my S10, and getting it tuned. take this thing out today uh, I got a buddy shop we're gonna take it to uh, out by a little bit outside of town where I live uh, he's got a four-lane highway that runs right next to his shop and we're gonna take this thing out and just kind of drive it up and down it get some good data off of it tune it redo it redo it redo it redo it redo it a whole bunch of times till this thing's running good has a good tune in it maybe make a couple of test hits here and there and then yeah then it's gonna be just final prep for the track and then hopefully in the next week or two weeks I'll be taking it to the track for the first time so yeah let's get the trailer loaded up and get out to the shop So surprise, we're back in the shop. Uh, uh, as I was going through the video footage, I figured out that you really couldn't hear anything that I was saying and most of it didn't make sense because I was jumping around so much trying to watch the data recording off of my laptop and also keep eye on the wideband gauge and also talk to the camera at the same time and all of it kind of jumbled up together. Really didn't make for really clear on what I was doing or what was going on. I just decided I would remake that portion of the video and kind of give you guys a little better understanding of what's going on, a little clearer. Real quick though, um, this isn't a master tuning course. This is just gonna be the very basics of what I'm doing for my particular setup. Uh, there's all kinds of different tuning softwares, all kinds of different tuning setups, and different ways you can tune a car. This is just kind of what I'm doing on this particular day. I don't, I'm not even gonna go into um, tuning spark advance or any of that stuff this is purely just tuning one portion of the fuel tables the system that i'm running is going to be the mass airflow system my system is going to be the stock pcm out of the truck that i currently pulled the engine out of so mine is still ran off of the mass airflow system there is options with hp tuners that you can run patches on them to get rid of the mass airflow and basically run it off a speed density system but I'm not currently doing that. I'm just running mine based off of the mass airflow system. Um, now with this system, I'm also not running O2 sensors um, and I'm not running um, any kind of electronic transmission control, any of that stuff. I'm running a TH400 in this thing that's a completely manual valve body. So I don't have any uh, transmission stuff that I have to worry about that's going to affect anything in here. So, basics of a mass airflow system. Now, like I said, this is not a all-encompassing course. I'm just going to kind of be giving you the basics of kind of how a mass airflow system works. What the mass airflow system does is it has a couple of different kind of sides to um, how it calculates out. Now, it has the intake side, which is going to be things like mass airflow, intake air temperature, coolant temperature, throttle position, manifold load, all of those different things and then it's going to use that along with knowing the injector cycles and kind of the injector dynamics knowing how much it flows at certain pressures and then it takes that and calculates out a certain air fuel ratio that you're commanding now this takes a lot longer to set up on the front side because you're having to go through and basically map out the manifold or the the mass airflow table um, and i'm going to show you that here in a little bit but it, once you get that mass airflow table mapped out and recalibrated, it's super simple because then all you have to do is go into your tables and adjust, um, adjust what air fuel ratio you want to use. And then it automatically calculates it out and will spit it out into the engine. That's all you have to do. That's it. 
so it makes it super simple on the back side. All right, so now we're gonna kind of take you into the software and kind of where I've been messing with on the tuning runs um, currently that I have ran. Now, there's two different parts to HP tuners. There's going to be a, a actual tuning portion of it. So that's going to be the portion of where you're actually making all of your changes in the tables. This is going to be all the data that you're going to reflash back into the PCM in order to make another test run. Now, the other part of that is going to be the actual logging software. The logging software actually allows you to log all the different parameters that it can see inside of the engine and then be able to keep those and save those for later so you can kind of go back and look at what you need to change. And this makes it really easy um, to be able to tune um, the mass airflow table like what I was doing this weekend. So on the software, this is going to be the tuning software. And again, going in here, I'm not going to go through all of these, you know, all the different tabs that you can go through here. There's obviously a ton that you can adjust on these. Um, I'm just going to show you what I was doing. So I was only messing with the math calibration, the mass airflow calibration. So we're gonna go into this table. It has mass airflow frequency. Now, this is what's being pulled off of your mass airflow. So when air moves past it, it's giving a signal back to the PCM in Hertz. So this is what you're gonna be modifying once you have a good log going. So now I'll transfer over into the logging software. Now, I don't have it hooked up to a vehicle right now, but I have my old logs that I can show you kind of what I was doing and how I was doing it. So we'll just run kind of the second RAN that I did. And again, this is all of the data that was pulled off of that run or off of that test. Now, the way that I typically tune these is I go out and I get it warmed up. I get everything kind of evened out, you know, get temperatures to where they're settled and they're not adjusting anymore. Anytime you have temperatures that are adjusting or um, any kind of weird, um, heat soak or anything like that, it's going to mess with what it's commanding as air fuel ratio. Anytime it changes in a commanded air fuel ratio, it's going to have this weird spot of where it has basically a transient time where they're not going to match up and that's going to give you false readings in other tables that I'm going to show you here in a little so you always want to kind of drive it for a little bit. So typically what I've done and what I was doing on this one is I would drive it out about two miles. Two miles gives the engines plenty of time to kind of idle out, kind of warm up, get coolant temperature settled, get intake air temperature settled. And then when I was turning around, as soon as I turned around and got back up to speed into third gear, then I would hit the start logging button. So that way all of my data that I'm getting in here there's no real transient times of where the air fuel ratio is trying to change. It makes it a lot easier. So once you have that going, um, I can kind of show you what it looks like just kind of starting back here. And as I'm going, uh, you can see TPS signal right here. You can see engine RPMs up here. And then this is where you're going to have my important information or what I see as my important information. So I'm gonna pause it here real quick while I describe these. Uh, so what I'm doing is I have a smoothed AFR and I have a commanded AFR. My commanded AFR is coming from the PCM. It's what the PCM is wanting the air fuel ratio to be. Then I have my smoothed AFR. My smoothed AFR is coming directly from my wideband gauge. I'm then taking that signal and smoothing it so that way I get a nicer, smoother line um, instead of such a jumpy line and then that allows me to have two different points that I can view. Now, what HP Tuners allows you to do and what running a mass airflow sensor allows you to do is you can take the commanded and you can take what your actual is and you can figure out what the percentage change is in between the two, so your error basically. And I can kind of show you that here. Slide this over. So this is gonna be the table of what your percentage error is. So this is going to be the difference in what your commanded is versus what your actual is. Now, as you're going through here, um, what I was doing and as I'm driving, what I'm doing is I'm feathering the throttle ever so slightly. Again, really smooth, nice, even nice changes. 
Uh, the reason you're going to want to do that is if you ever have a throttle blip, again, it's going to throw it into power enrichment, which introduce transient conditions, which is going to throw off these numbers. So you always want to make sure you have nice, easy, smooth throttle transitions. And then you can go through these tables and actually watch the hertz and you can kind of guide your foot and put um, the little markers inside of each of these cells. So I'll kind of show you that now. So kind of as I'm going, I'm kind of feeding my throttle and just trying to get this to stay in some of those cells to be able to output what the actual number is. So as it goes, it's going to be pulling all of these and inputting the data into these cells. Now, once you've gotten through all of these, once you go through a range, and I think on this one, I went all the way up to roughly 4,000 hertz. Yeah, four or 5,000 hertz, somewhere in that range. Once you get this data, and once you have enough um, hits in every cell, and you have a pretty confident table of where you're going, that's when you can take this data so you can take all of this data and you can basically take it and then run it into your tuning software. So now this is where you go back to your tuning software. And as you can kind of see, I have my mass airflow frequency hertz um, column or row up here and it matches over here. So all I have to do is go through these and figure out where my high spots are, where my low spots are, and then I can tune that way. So I can go through here and it's kind of starting down here towards the bottom. I can say, okay, I'm 10% rich, 12% rich, 8% rich, 8% rich. So what I would typically do in these cells is I would go about 11% in between these two and I would give that and I would go into here into those same cells so that would be 2375 and 2500 hertz. So going into those two cells, I would go into those two cells and then take out 10% fuel. So I would just go 0.90 and then multiply the, those values by 0.90 and that'll take out 10% of your fueling. And then you kind of do that for all this. So you'd go in here for 8%, 4%. Um, I would probably just do a 4% hit between both of these. And then now you're down around in the 2%, 3% range again. Again, then I would you know, continue on. If it's under a percent difference, I'm not really all that worried about it. Um, again, I'm gonna kind of keep it um, where it's over a percent difference. Anytime you're running these things, you're never going to get dead nuts on. It's, it's just not gonna happen. So you kind of have to run these things and kind of do it if it's over a percent that's where i change it and typically if it's ever lean i always try to change it to being rich i would rather it have just be slightly rich than slightly lean um, it's going to save your engine on the long run but yeah i'm going to go through all of these tables and all of this logging data and i'm going to go through here make those changes in the pcm in here and then i'm going to reflash that back into the pcm and then we're gonna go out and do it again. And so you're just gonna consistently make runs and make runs and make runs and make runs and make runs. Now, what I ended up finding just off of a whim even, so yeah, off of the graphs, I saw that everything was good. I kind of had some spots where I was like, ah, you know, just a few cells and then I'll go out and road tune it and then I'll pretty much be done for tonight as far as low, you know, low frequency tuning, the low RPM bands that I was trying to tune. As I was doing that, I was like, oh, I only changed a few cells. I'll just log it as I'm driving back out. And I can, if there is anything, I can stop and tune it there real quick and then drive it back and then I should be done. What ended up happening was I took off with it, got everything to level out, got all my uh, coolant temps and air fuel temps or air temps to even out. And then I hit the log button and everything went red. So red on mine is lean. So everything went about 5% lean, just all the way across the board. And I had no idea what had happened. I thought maybe I loaded the wrong file into it or something. Got out to my turnaround spot, stopped the logger, turned around, decided, okay, we'll check it coming back. If it's doing the same thing, I'll try to reload the tune once I get back to the shop. 
as I was coming back, everything evened out. It was perfect. There was no issues all the way across the board. What I ended up finding was, I think I don't have enough exhaust pipe on this. So uh, wide bands need a good section of exhaust pipe post uh, wide band sensor. Um, because if you don't, you can actually have oxygen that kind of gets sucked up into your exhaust and then it can throw off your O2 sensor readings. And I had a crosswind coming from that side of the vehicle, the side that my O2 sensor is on. So I think what's happening is that I'm getting a cross flow that actually was throwing off all my O2 sensor readings. So whoo, more work. So I have new exhaust piping coming for this thing, but yeah, that's kind of the video, kind of a, a sad, sad ending to it. I was really hoping to have this thing tuned, ready to go. And obviously that's not gonna happen now. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Uh, like always, like, subscribe, share the video if you really liked it. Check out my Instagram. My Instagram's Motivated Motorsports, just like the YouTube channel. And yeah, thanks for watching.